think the definition of a rock star is. A rock star is somebody that stands out in front of a loud-ass rock band singing and screaming their guts out. <laughs> Freddie Mercury was a rock star. Robert Plant is a rock star. Sometimes they're musicians in a band. Jimmy Page is a rock star. You know, Jimi Hendrix was maybe the original rock star. Okay. The Beatles were pop stars, I think. And Elvis was what? Elvis was a rock and roll star, and he was the king of rock and roll. So there's a difference between rock and roll and rock music. Huge difference. And what do you think that difference is? The difference is 1965, the song was Day Tripper. That's rock music. That's where it turned a corner. But, okay, rock Buddy and Holly. roll as opposed to rockabilly? Rockabilly was the country twang side of it. Yeah, the, the, the early Carl Perkins stuff was was true rockabilly. That's the stuff that had that hillbilly roots, uh, you know, the bluegrass country twangy kind of hillbilly sound that went along with the rock beat. Sam Phillips is always going to have a huge impact on the industry because he discovered some of the... Uh, the cornerstones of rock music that with with the rockabilly guys he was trying to record blues records and was trying looking for white guys who could sound black and that's how he discovered Elvis and Carl and even Johnny Cash and Jerry Lee to a degree although they didn't really sound black they had a certain edge and a certain little sparkle Sam Phillips was great at recognizing that in an artist he could see that special little something that was very likable and uh, and sellable. Let's face it. You know, Sam was a businessman and fairly successful. He did really well for the time. And he, as I said, he discovered and helped to develop what are the four cornerstones of of this entire industry of the modern pop music industry. And when I say pop music, I incorporate all those genres that that we talk about here, whether it be rock and roll, rockabilly, blues, R and B. Uh, I'm talking about traditional R&B and rock and roll and stuff, things that were started in the 40s and 50s. Those four individuals, Elvis, Carl Perkins, Jerry Lee, and Johnny Cash, are the cornerstones of everything that came after them. They sort of developed something entirely new. They had no idea what they were doing. They were just playing what was in their soul. And the music that they were hearing and the, the things that they were creating was a combination of all sorts of stuff, of, of gospel music and blues music and country music and this new stuff that was coined rock and roll. They were just sort of experimenting with all of it, and it's kind of a melting pot. But everything that came after those guys really does rest on their shoulders. And Sam Phillips uh, had the ability to see that quality in them, that there was something bigger than just themselves on their horizon. And collectively, there certainly were. One of the best things that, that I've found to showcase new talent, new songs, is, oddly enough, on the radio. Now, you say to yourself, okay, how do I get radio airplay? Well, there are some radio shows that are uh, produced. For example, I produce one every Sunday night on a uh, station right here in Jackson, Tennessee, uh, Rock 92.3. It's a forever communications station. And I host the show, and each week I showcase new talent, singer-songwriters from right here in our area is my primary focus. Uh, sometimes I have on national guests, uh, nationally recognized singer-songwriters, artists, producers, all sorts of folks that I have had the good fortune to work with and, and meet in my years of the business. And they very graciously agree to come do my show from time to time. I mostly have those folks on for educational purposes, but the local singer-songwriters that I have on gain huge exposure because we have a very large audience. We're a 100,000-watt station. We reach into parts of seven states when the weather's just right, which sounds crazy enough, but that's the way it works, and we don't have any other frequencies crowding us on that particular frequency. So uh, that, in my opinion, is one of the best ways to get the exposure that every artist needs and to try to get as many listeners as they can, hopefully driving uh, those listeners to the artist's website, MySpace page, Facebook, wherever, that they can then purchase their music, which is the way it's done nowadays.